we want to integrate 1 minus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. So let me write this down. 1 minus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. And one way of attacking this is by multiplying this fraction by 1 minus sine of x over 1 minus sine of x. And you may say, how is this helping us? Well, for one thing, since you have 1 plus sine of x in the denominator, there is a problem with this plus because this plus is making the evaluation of this integral very hard. Think of instead of 1 plus sine of x, if we add just sine of x, you can do 1 over sine of x minus sine of x over sine of x, and evaluating that integral is going to be pretty easy. But since you have 1 plus, because you have this plus, you have two elements instead of just one element, that's making this fraction look more messy. So by multiplying by 1 minus sine of x, we can get rid of this plus sign because you are going to have 1 minus sine of x squared up top, and down below, you're going to have 1 minus sine squared of x, which is equal to cosine squared of x. So that's helping us reduce the bottom of this fraction to one single element, cosine squared of x dx. Now that we don't have this plus sign, now we can maybe attempt dividing each of the elements in the numerator by cosine squared of x. And to do so, let me start by expanding the top, 1 minus 2 sine of x plus sine squared of x. And you, we want to divide it by cosine squared of x dx. And now let's divide this out. Realize that instead of 1, pl 1 plus sine of x, now we just have cosine squared of x. So now when we divide it like this, it's going to simplify much more nicely. So 1 over cosine squared of x is going to be secant squared of x. And minus 2 sine of x over cosine squared. This one is not as obvious. So let me write it like this. Sine of x times cosine of x times cosine of x. Sine of x over cosine of x is going to get us tangent of x, and 1 over cosine of x is going to get us secant of x. So we are getting secant of x times tangent of x by dividing sine of x and cosine squared of x. And for the last term, sine of x over cosine squared of x is going to be tangent squared of x because sine over cosine is tangent. So let me write this. So you have integral of secant squared of x minus 2 secant of x tangent of x plus tangent squared of x dx. And this is pretty easy to evaluate. Integrating secant squared gets us tangent of x because differentiating tangent gets us secant. Minus 2 integrating secant of x ta times tangent of x gets us simply secant of x because derivative of secant of x is secant of x times tangent of x. Now the only tricky part is how to integrate tangent squared of x dx. And you may remember there's a close relationship between tangent squared of x and secant squared of x. And that's extremely beneficial because we know how to integrate secant squared of x, that's tangent of x. So if we can write tangent squared of x in terms of secant squared of x, we can integrate this. And we can do so because by Pythagorean identity, tangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to secant squared of x. So tangent squared of x dx is simply secant squared of x minus 1 because tangent squared of x is secant squared of x minus 1. And integrating this is pretty easy. So you have tangent of x minus 2 secant of x. Integrating secant squared gets us plus tangent of x. Integrating minus 1 gets us minus x. And you have constant of integration. And we can combine two tangent of x's to get us 2 times tangent of x minus 2 times secant of x minus x plus c. And that's it. So integral of 1 minus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x is 2 times tangent of x minus 2 times secant of x minus x plus c.